Well, thanks for joining us today on this webinar sponsored by Liquid Web called Taming the Whirlwind. We're going to talk all about how to grow your business and keep things moving forward, even while it seems like you're always busy with client work. My name is Nathan Ingram. I am from Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm the host at iThemes Training. iThemes is a liquid web company, and we're thrilled to be part of the liquid web family. I personally have been a freelance web business owner since 1995, been doing this a long time. And I started coaching WordPress freelancers back in 2014. And it's truly a passion of mine to help uh, those of you who are working with clients and trying to keep a business together uh, at the same time. It's, it's, a, it's a passion of mine to help you grow through the common problems that many freelancers face while they're trying to uh, do well for clients but still do well for themselves. Now, I used to start a presentation like this off with a slide that says I'm not an expert, but then I found this definition by a physicist named Dr. Niels Bohr who said that an expert is a person who has found out by his own painful experience all the mistakes that one can make in a very narrow field. So by that definition, I guess I'm an expert because uh, I have probably made all the mistakes that can possibly be made in the freelance web development world. And so I, if I can help you avoid some of those mistakes and you can learn from my experience, that's really my goal today. Because I spent a lot of years where I was constantly, it seems like, chasing every little client request that came along. I could never seem to get a good consistent workflow. I was always struggling to keep my own website up to date and put into practice strategies and neat things that I was learning on, you know, through videos and webinars and WordCamp talks and all those things, getting time to put those things into practice for myself. Uh, so we're going to talk all about that today. And, and what I want to start out with is this concept that as freelancers, if, if you're a freelance web developer, we all face common challenges. In over four years of coaching conversations, I've found very few unique issues. So if you have a business and you're working with clients, the likelihood of you actually having it all together is very low. Uh, most people who are working with clients and trying their best to build websites and you know keep the business going, they're sort of figuring out as they go along, and, and I sure did for many years. You know, for most folks in that position, we don't have our pricing figured out. We we you know they haven't figured out a good site creation process that's bulletproof. Uh, we tend to always struggle with isolation and feeling alone. We struggle with income instability, up months and down months. We struggle with problem clients. These are all common challenges that we face. And being productive is also one of those common struggles that just about everybody who is a freelancer working with clients face. And the problem is when you're in a group of your peers, maybe you're at a word camp or maybe you're at a local meetup or you're talking to some other freelancers in a group, it's easy to think that you're the only one with those struggles. And that's simply not true. We all face common challenges and you're not alone in this. So what I wanna talk about today is this common struggle that we all experience when it comes to productivity and actually getting things done while we're still working with clients. Then we're gonna spend a little bit of time actually understanding that problem, putting some words around it, uh, some terminology around the problem that will help us to, to really start to deal with it. Then I'm gonna give you a strategy, some tools and a process that I promise you will be able to work and start to see productivity increase in your world almost immediately. And as we wrap up today, a couple of suggestions from my practical experience on how to succeed and really up your productivity game. So let's start in and talk a little bit about this common struggle that we all face. If you're a freelancer working with clients, then one of the struggles that you probably face is what's been called the strategy versus execution struggle. Strategy is how we do it and why we do it. Execution is what we do. And th these are always seemingly at odds. And both of these things are absolutely critical. So what I wanna do is spend a little bit of time um, putting a name to our challenges to start, you know, really helping us to solve them because we need proficiency on the execution side. And by that, I mean, you got to know HTML, you got to know CSS, you got to know PHP, 
You gotta know, you know, some JavaScript and jQuery. You might need to know some stuff about typography and design and on and on and on. We need to be good at the execution side, but we also need proficiency on the strategy side. The internal documents, great proposals, great contracts, great processes, how, how to do marketing, the creation of new services to sell to your clients, personal productivity. Both the execution and the strategy are absolutely critical. Now, I am, by the way, going to give you a link for these slides as well as the, um, as well as the, the uh, a tool that I'm going to give you to work through these. So you don't need to be scribbling things down unless you just want to. We'll give you all that as we wrap up today. Now, most of us understand the need for strategy. We understand that if we do well in the strategy side of our business, that we'll become more efficient, more productive, more profitable. But when it comes to actually the doing of the strategy, that's where things get messy. Now, if I had to ask you, you know, if we opened a window right now and looked through your monitor at your desk and we looked into your business and we asked the question, what does your strategy look like? Is your strategy steadily improving in your business? Or does it look a little more like this? It may be a little of both. You know, you start kind of going for a little while and then you get stuck in all these twists and you go backwards, you go forwards, you go up, you go down. You're doing strategy okay for a little while and then maybe not so well. You kind of revert back to some old habits. For lots of us, we get started moving upward and then we get busy, we get distracted, we're backtracking, we're losing ground. And before you know it, you might even find yourself back to where you started again. So why is it so hard to keep strategy in focus? Why is it so hard that maybe after you've read a book or you watched a webinar like this one or you attended a seminar of some sort or maybe you went to a word camp, like I'll be at word camp St. Louis this weekend, it's gonna be a great time. There's word camps going on all around the country and around the world. Or maybe you watched a video online or uh, you read a blog post and you've got this great idea and it could be that you even have a list of those great ideas that you've picked up over time that one of these days you're gonna get done. One of these days you're gonna spend the time to actually go through that list and learn that new thing or put in this new process into practice, but that list never seems to get shorter. It just seems to get longer. And you add things to the list, but very few things ever actually get accomplished. Because what happens when you stop reading that article? Or what happens when the video you're watching online goes off? Or the webinar is over? Or you get home after that seminar or word camp? It, it's not that you didn't have great intentions to do those things. It's just that life got in the way, right? I mean, customer demands came up. You had a bunch of emails you had to deal with. There may be some family issues that needed your attention. And three months later, you got the same list. And they're all great ideas, but there's been no practical change to your business world. So I want to put a word to this whole idea that prevents us from getting things done that's going to, I think, help us to start working towards a solution. And that word is whirlwind. I want to spend a little bit of time unpacking what the whirlwind actually is. We need to understand what we're up against so we can know our enemy. Knowing our enemy is the first step in defeating it. So what is the whirlwind? The whirlwind, as I've said here on this slide, is the energy and attention that's needed to run your business. The whirlwind is the 15 emails from clients waiting on you in the morning, all of which have demands for you to have things done by noon. The whirlwind is that client call that just comes in right as you were just about to start working on your own website for a change. Does that sound familiar? Or the whirlwind could also be that one hour meeting with a client that actually stretches to three hours and it still feels like you haven't gotten anything done. The whirlwind is the urgent. 
you can come to your desk in the morning with the best of intentions. It's going to be a day where I finally get to work on my own stuff. I'm going to get some strategy done. And then it lasts about two minutes. <laughs> because you open your inbox and there's all those emails. Or your phone rings. Or you've got five voicemails from clients that all have to be returned. I've spent hours and hours in seminars and webinars reading books that were all full of excellent information that I know could really help my business and I never ended up implementing anything at all. It was excellent information, but it ended up making no practical impact in my world. And it wasn't the presenter's fault. It wasn't the author's fault. It's because when I got back, there were all these emails and phone calls and a hundred other things I have to do in a day. Or <laughs> maybe, maybe I got distracted by a new piece of technology and I ended up spending half my day tinkering with something that doesn't really move the yardsticks at all for my business instead of implementing a fantastic idea that would. Now, I'm sure none of you guys would have that struggle, right? But that's something that I dealt with. The whirlwind is the urgent and here's what the Franklin Covey, uh, Covey Company says. When urgency and importance clash, urgency wins every time. Now, we know that the goals and the strategy are important, but the whirlwind is the urgent. And urgency always wins. So when we know it's important to do strategy, but we've got that email from the client, the client work wins. And as for our own strategy and goals, well, you know, we'll just get to that next week. What we seem not to understand or ever really learn, and it took me a long time to realize this, and maybe you're smarter than me and you just get it already, but delaying strategy doesn't work. This is the lesson that I could never seem to learn. The whirlwind never goes away. Because when I'll say, oh, I'll get to it next week, I'll do this client work now, and I'll get to my strategy stuff next week, I would always forget the one important thing. And that is, you know what? The whirlwind is going to be there next week too. <laughs> and so when you delay strategy, if you kick the can down the road, oh, I'll work on my website next week. Oh, I'll implement this great idea next week. The problem is the whirlwind is waiting for you on Monday morning. It's waiting for you next week as well. It never goes away. So we have to figure out how to deal with this. Now, by the way, lest you get the wrong idea, the whirlwind isn't bad. It just is what it is. Your whirlwind is your business. It's your work. If there was no whirlwind, you'd be in trouble because there'd be no money coming in. The whirlwind isn't bad. It just is what it is. It's a fact of life for freelancers. So we can't ignore it. We just have to accept it and factor the whirlwind into our big goal of figuring out how do I move my business forward in the middle of the whirlwind? Because both of those things have to happen. So what I want to do now is give you a little bit of a strategy for how to tame the whirlwind. Now that we've identified what we're up against, we need to figure out a plan for how to deal with it because it's never going to go away. It's always going to be there. So if you ever really want to get your business moving forward and you always seem to be thwarted every time you try to do that, you got to factor in the whirlwind and we got to have a plan that includes it. So we need this plan to accomplish our goals in the middle of the whirlwind. I mean, you're, if you're a freelance business owner, you're a smart person. You have some level of discipline. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in business. So the challenge is not accomplishing your goals. You can accomplish goals. You get the client work done, right? The challenge is figuring out how to accomplish my goals in the middle of everything else. And here's what you have to figure in. Without a plan, the whirlwind always wins. Urgency always wins over importance. And you've seen that happen in your own world, right? I mean, you've seen it where you've tried to get your work done, but then the client work comes in. You, you just, you're compelled to get that done. So let's talk about a plan to actually work with, work through this. And I want to offer a plan that's, it's a three-step plan. First of all, it's going to involve an initial planning time with yourself. 
And we're going to dig into each of these in a minute. And by the way, yes, we will be. I'll give you the slides as we wrap up today. It's going to start with an initial planning meeting with yourself. That'll be followed up by a weekly planning time each week with yourself. I'm going to show you how to do this. And last of all, some scheduled weekly execution time. Okay, that's the plan. An initial planning meeting, a weekly planning meeting, and then a weekly execution. Here's how it's going to work. The initial planning meeting is two hours. Two hours unplugged. Now, I always suggest two hours because that seems to be about how long it's going to take to accomplish what you need to get accomplished in this initial planning meeting. So schedule yourself some time away. Two uninterrupted hours. And I say unplugged simply because if you try to have this strategy meeting and you're connected to the inter internet some way, you're going to get emails, you're going to get text messages, you're going to get you know Slack notifications or whatever else that it's inevitably going to distract you from what you need to be accomplishing. So try to get two hours away unplugged, away from screens, turn off your phone, go wherever it is that you need to go where you can most easily concentrate in some environment that is stimulating to you. You know, so for some people, it's go out on the back porch and enjoy the afternoon, uh, you know, the, the nice temperature in the afternoon right now and unplug, get away from screens. Or maybe it's a local cafe or coffee shop. Wherever it is for you, get away from the screen and go to that place. Get a notebook and a pen. <laughs> this planning meeting with yourself is it's going to work better if it's analog. I promise you. So go old school, get away from screens. I'm going to give you a tool in a minute that you can print out and take with you. Take the time to let the whirlwind calm down in your mind so you can focus. And then you're going to make a list of things to do and get it on paper. But you got to schedule this as a priority. You, if, if you just say, I'm going to have a planning meeting with myself one day, it'll never happen because the whirlwind is always going to consume that time. So put it on the calendar with a reminder and an alarm or two so you remember to actually do this. This scheduled time has to be just as much a priority as any other client work that you're doing. You are your most important client. You are your most important client. So treat this just as important as you would any other client work that you're doing. Okay, now here's what we need to get accomplished in this initial planning meeting. And by the way, if you have questions along the way, feel free to drop those in the, the chat panel of the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, if it's not open, you just click the little arrow and it'll pop down. You can ask me a question and I'll get to that as we go here. So in this initial planning meeting of two hours, you need to accomplish two tasks. The first thing is to identify the issues. And second is to plan action items. Okay, two hours, two tasks. We're going to start off with identifying the issues. And you ask yourself these questions. What are the changes that I most need to make in my business? What, are the, what do I most need to do? And just write a list. And you probably already know what those things are. It's just getting them out of your head and onto paper. What are the things that I really need to do to get my business moving forward? Because if you're stuck and you're not growing, again, you're not alone. Just about everybody struggles with this. So just get this list out of your head and on paper. And then pick your top three. And the top three need to be the ones which are going to bring the most immediate results. Now that's really important. It may not be the, the easiest things to do. You need to pick the three that are going to bring the most immediate impact. And there's a reason for this. Because immediate impact builds momentum. And if you feel like you're sort of stuck in a rut in your business, it's momentum that's really going to move you forward. So identify the most important issues that are going to move you forward in your business. Pick the top three that are going to bring the most immediate results. Because as you start to see those things happening, that's going to give you encouragement. It's going to give you momentum to tame the whirlwind and keep on going. Because it's not easy to do. 
It's not easy to get unstuck, but once you get some momentum behind you, you can really start to move forward in your business. Now, let me just mention one other thing. These top three items that you're going to end up with in this planning meeting are probably not the things that you will enjoy doing. Otherwise, you would have done them already, right? I mean, if I would enjoy doing it, I would have knocked this out already. It's probably things you've been putting off because you don't want to deal with it. And that's human nature, right? So just be aware of that. But figure and be honest with yourself, what are the three most important things I need to do to bring the most immediate impact in my business, okay? So you've identified the issues, you've got a list, and you've picked the top three. Now, here's the second step in the initial planning meeting. That is to plan out some action items. So what I want you to do next is take those top three goals, the top three things you need to do, and break those things into action items, things that you can actually do that are going to take two to four hours to complete. Two to four hours. So each of the three goals, you're going to break those into action items, and each of those action items need to take two to four hours to complete. Now, the reason that I say two to four hours, I'll get to in a minute. All right, so you got it? Number one, come up with your list, pick your top three. Then break your top three into action items. It'll take two to four hours to complete. Now, I'm going to give you a tool here. If you go to nathaningram.com forward slash goals, you can download this PDF packet. nathaningram.com forward slash goals. I'll give you a second to keep that on the screen so you can get there. nathaningram.com forward slash goals. That will give you this packet of PDFs. Now, there's actually two worksheets here, and uh, a to total of four pages. Each of the worksheets has an example. So the first page is a blank printable, and the second one is an example, which we'll get to in a second. The third page, again, a blank printable, and then an example. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just have a look at what this is. Now, the goal generator uses what is called the SMART goal system. One of the, the, the main reasons why our goals don't work is because what we consider a goal a lot of time is not really a goal. It's sort of an idea or it's an aspiration. It's not really practical. So a smart person a long time ago came up with this system called SMART goals. And SMART is an acrostic for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. Those five characteristics are what really characterize a, a good goal. So a SMART goal, first of all, is specific. And ask yourself this question. What do I really want to accomplish? And what you're asking and, and putting in this box would usually answer questions of who, what, when, where, and how. And I'm going to give you a specific example of this in a minute. Next, it needs to be measurable. How is it that I know I'm making progress? So start adding some elements of how much and how many. Attainable means, is this a goal I can actually achieve? What are the obstacles in the way? Am I willing to overcome them? What are my next steps? What do I actually need to do to accomplish this goal? Next, SMART goals are relevant. Why is this goal important? How does it fit into the rest of my business and my life? I am doing this so that relevancy answers the so that question. Why am I doing this to begin with? And last of all, a SMART goal is time bound. I need to give myself a deadline because a goal without a deadline is just an idea. Okay, now once we put these together, I've given you a little formula over here to actually assemble each of these elements of a SMART goal into a declaration. And it'll be easier if I just show you an example to explain how this works. So let's say uh, my goal, what I really want to do, I've decided that, you know what, I need to have more services to offer my clients. And maybe a great way uh, to have more services so that you know I can get more recurring revenue coming into my business is to offer some sort of social media 
service to my clients where I help them post content and, you know, manage their, their social presence and so forth. So here's how that concept factors into this advanced goal generator. Specific, I need to create a social media service to create and manage social property and content for my clients. Okay. That specific, I know exactly what it is that I want to do. Okay. How is it measurable? Well, okay, I'll start with Facebook, then I'll consider adding, uh, consider adding Instagram and Pinterest later on. But we're going to start with Facebook because, you know, for the clients that I'm thinking about, most of their people are going to be on Facebook. So we'll start there. So this makes it measurable. Is it attainable? Yeah, it's attainable, but... I need to understand Facebook ads better. I need to develop a template for social marketing. I need to determine the best platform to manage it. All right, so now we've got some next steps. I'm, there's some obstacles, but I know what I need to do. I know what my next steps are. Is it relevant? Yes, because I'm realizing that I need to offer more than just website creation services. So adding a social media management platform or service is key to building recurring revenue that I know I need in my business. Okay, does that make sense? Now, last of all, it needs to be time bound. I need to have a deadline. Now, this this was uh, a, an example that was built a couple of years ago, and I just had this random date. Uh, it has no relation to today's current date. Um, I'll say, I'm going to have this service ready to promote by blank, in this case, April the 30th. All right, so I've taken some time to figure out each of the elements of this SMART goal. So in our example, I will have taken a couple of hours to sit down at my local Starbucks and unplug from everything, maybe put some music on, tune everything out, and focus on what is it that I need to grow my business. I know that one of the things I need to do immediately is get more recurring revenue coming in. That's going to help me stabilize my cash flow and just make business better altogether. And one of the great ways that I can do that is by offering this social media service. So now I've taken that idea of building a social media service and I've fleshed it out in the SMART goal format. Okay, we've got all these boxes filled in. Now, what we're going to do next is put it in the form of what I call a declaration. And I like this because this is motivational. So here's the format. I will and then take the specific elements from the specific and measurable boxes over here. I will blank and blank by a certain time because or so that the relevancy. So here's what I come up with. I will create a social media service for my clients, that's the specific, using Facebook, that's the measurable, by April the 30th because it's a key to building recurring revenue in my business. See that? That's a good, solid declaration. That is a smart goal. I will create a social media management service for my clients using Facebook by April the 30th because it's a key to building recurring revenue in my business. Now, what you do with this declaration is you take that out and you print it out and you put it right in front of your face, right above your monitor, or write right right it on your whiteboard. Put it where you're looking at it all the time. Because what's going to happen is this. The temptation is going to be, I come back from that planning meeting, patting myself on the back, and then never do anything else. That's human nature. Also because, guess what's waiting on me in my office when I come back from the planning meeting? The whirlwind. It's always waiting for you. So having a declaration like this is going to help you Keep the most important things, the most important things. And I've got to remember that, you know what? I've got to build recurring revenue. And the way I'm going to do this is by getting this social media service out the door by April the 30th. This starts to keep the whirlwind in perspective. So take a sheet like this. And during that two-hour planning meeting with yourself, you're going to complete a goal generator for each of your three top priorities. Now you can do this, it will probably take you right about two hours to get done. So flesh it out, do your declaration, and you've got it. This is the first step in taming the whirlwind in your business. 
Now I've given you another tool here, and that's the Advanced Goal Manager. And each of these declarations goes here in this goal area. And this is simply a page to help you keep track of where you are on that goal. So let me show you an example. Here's the Advanced Goal Manager. And what I've done here in this top box is I've just simply brought my declaration into the box. I'll create a social media management service for my clients using Facebook by April 30th because it's a key to building recurring revenue in my business. I've got my goal right here. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start fleshing it out a little bit. What are the resources and information that I need? Well, some of this, by the way, is going to come from what you put up here in the attainable box. I need to understand Facebook ads better. I need to develop a template. I need a, a good platform for management. So we're going to come down here and start to put those things in. All right, here's what I need to do. I need to understand Facebook ads and conversion tracking and analytics. I need to research the price of competitor services. I need to determine the best platform for managing multiple accounts. I need to create a good template for social messaging and content strategy. All right, so I've fleshed it out a little bit. These are the things I need to do. And you can put some notes. Hey, you know, back in January, I figured out there's another competitor, which I've just simply called Social LLC. They offer a management service for $3.49 per month with a $4.99 setup fee. And you just keep jotting some notes down right there. Now, what we're going to do below this, this is what we're also going to do during our planning meeting. Remember I told you that one of the goals of the planning meeting is to break each of those goals down into action items that are going to take you two to four hours to complete, right? That's where these action items goes. Now, each of these items ought to take two to four hours to complete. So I'm going to research the best course for learning Facebook ads. I'm going to put a deadline by that. I'm going to complete that course by a deadline. I'm going to research management platforms. I'm going to have a content strategy template in place, perform a market survey, finalize my services and pricing, add the services to the website, launch an email campaign. Each of these items ought to take two to four hours to complete. I'm going to put a deadline here and I can check them off as I go. So this is how you move from the goal generator into the goal manager. And what you're going to do during that initial two hour meeting with yourself, you're going to complete a goal generator and you're going to get the goal manager action items filled in for three of your priorities for your top three. That ought to take you about two hours to do, roughly two hours. Now, when you leave that meeting with yourself, you now have a plan for probably the next 12 weeks in your business. Roughly a quarter, you ought to be able to accomplish you know, three goals and get this done. So use these tools. I hope they're helpful to you. Again, you can download those at, those at nathaningram.com forward slash goals. So that's the initial planning session. The second step of this process is the weekly planning meeting. Now, this is a part that a lot of people, as I've worked this plan with over the years, this is where a lot of people fall off the horse because they don't see the importance of this. But I promise you, this is critical. Now, what I want you to do is take 30 minutes before the week starts and plan your week. And I promise you, you can plan the week. It'll take you about a half hour at first to get used to this. And then over time, it'll take you less and less time. It takes me about 15 minutes now to get this done every week. But you need to do it before the week starts. So some people that I coach do it Friday afternoons. It's the last thing they do. So Friday afternoon, they're planning the next week. Or me personally, I do it Sunday evening. So, you know, late Sunday evening when the family is all sort of headed toward bed and things are quiet, uh, I take a half hour, 15 minutes, and I plan my week and see what that week is going to look like. Or I have some clients that do it early Monday morning, and that's fine. The point is, do not hit your chair on Monday morning in your office without a plan, because without a plan, the whirlwind always wins. Because the whirlwind is waiting on you. As soon as you walk in your office door on Monday morning and you open up your computer, the whirlwind is waiting. 
As soon as you look at your email, your voicemail, your text messages, or your trouble tickets, or however you manage your system, the whirlwind is waiting on you. So take a half hour at first. It'll get quicker as you go. But plan your week. Plan the time to execute on at least one action. See what the week looks like with whirlwind stuff, with projects you're working on or whatever, and schedule in one two to four hour block to complete one of your action items. If you can do more in a certain week, schedule more, but plan for at least one. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm getting a message in the chat that says the link is not working. Can anybody else confirm that? Anybody else have trouble pulling those up? Just drop it in the questions box. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you the Dropbox link directly. If you will look in the chat area, you guys ought to see now a link to Dropbox. If one of you kind folks could confirm that, just drop the question in and let me know that that link works. That would be great. Can you guys confirm that one is working? Do you see the link in the chat box, the Dropbox link? That ought to give you access to the worksheets. Okay, good. Okay, folks, sorry about that. The beautiful thing about a, the recording of the webinar is we'll just edit that part out. <laughs> All right, so in that weekly planning meeting, you take a 30 minutes and plan the time to execute one of those actions, okay? One, one of your goals in a two to four hour block. Now let me just give you a practical look at how this works for me. Now, this is my typical week, right? And what I do is I divide my day into three blocks. Uh, there's morning work, afternoon work, and whatever's going on in the evening. Now my family typically gets one of those blocks. Really, almost always, my family gets one of those blocks. Now this is helpful because, you know, there are some times where I may want to take a morning and go do something with my kids or they've got something going on at school that I want to be part of. So I will work, I'll do family stuff that morning, but I'll probably be working that evening as a result. So here's how that might look. Again, each day divided into three blocks. My family usually gets one. So here on Monday, I'm gonna uh, Monday morning is always whirlwind time because stuff is coming over the weekend or whatnot. So typically Mondays the whole day I schedule is whirlwind time and I'm with my family that night. Tuesday, maybe I've got a project that's going on. So Tuesday morning I'll do whirlwind stuff, stuff that comes up, and then I'll spend time Tuesday afternoon working on a project. Wednesday kind of looks the same. Thursday, oh, I'm going to go do some stuff with my kids Thursday morning. You know, my wife and kids, we're going to be do some stuff at the school. And so, yeah, we're going to, I'm going to be away Thursday morning, not doing client work at that time, but I'll come back, I'll deal with a whirlwind, and then I'll work on a project that evening. Friday morning, again, it's whirlwind time. And then here's where I plan my strategy. For me, it's almost always, virtually always, Friday afternoons are strategy time. It's what I call my CEO time, where I'm working on my business. I don't plan client meetings during that time. I don't look at email during that time. I'm working on my business and my strategy to move things forward. I'm doing something that is not client work, that moves the ball forward. Now, Friday night's family time. Now, there are some times, and you know how this is, where you are working like crazy, you're on a deadline, and sometimes you gotta work in the evening. And so that happens to me too, it happens to all of us. So what happens is, for me, I may be working morning, afternoon, and evening on business stuff. But by blocking out my week like this, I realize, okay, I've, for the last two nights, I've been working in the evening to get this project out the door. I now owe my family two blocks of time. <laughs> so the next week or in, in, in the coming weeks, you know, I, I may take off a whole day and pay back those two blocks of time. This is simply a way that helps me keep my world together. Now, here's the beauty of looking at your schedule like this. The whirlwind can be contained to that box. 
you can tell the whirlwind, guess what? I am only going to work on you Tuesday morning. And Tuesday afternoon, I'm going to not look at email for three or four hours. I'm going to turn the phone off and I'm just going to do head down project work and get this project moving forward. Now, you can do this, but you have to be deliberate about your time. It really takes some good productivity habits. And it, at the beginning, it really can be a force of will to make yourself not look at your email. So for me, I usually do calls twice a day. I'll do them first thing in the morning, and I'll do them right after lunch. I look at emails typically once an hour when it's whirlwind time or maybe once in the afternoon total if it's project time, not at all if it's strategy time. If you keep your email open during your work day and you see client emails popping in there all the time, it is virtually impossible to keep good productivity habits because you and I have been trained like Pavlov's dogs to immediately react to every email that pops in our inbox. There are studies about this that show how we get a dopamine hit in our brain when we respond to a notification of an electronic device. It is addictive. The problem is it's totally self-destructive when it comes to being good in productivity. So keep that email closed. The world is not gonna come to an end if you don't look at your email but once an hour. So keep that thing closed and focus on what you're trying to do. You can contain the whirlwind in its box if you start doing these things. Now, we've talked about the initial planning meeting with yourself, two hours away where you generate three goals and work them through the worksheets that I've given you. We talked about the weekly planning meeting where you plan out your week and figure out what's gonna happen when. Give the whirlwind time to exist and time to deal with it, but also plan in time to work on your projects and time to work on strategy. Of course, plan you know, time for your family or hobbies or whatever else is truly should be more important to you than your business. Now it comes to the hard part, which is this weekly execution time right here. Actually blocking out and accomplishing the strategy time. You've got to put it on the calendar. Two to four hours once a week. You can do this. Two to four hours once a week. Schedule the time and don't compromise it. This is the hardest part. It's the easiest part and it's the hardest part. It's very easy to understand. It's very hard to do. Don't break your schedule. It took me so long to get into the mental habit of from Friday at, on Friday afternoon, from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock, 4.30, I am in CEO time. It is my strategy time, and I am not compromising that at all unless it's a real serious, genuine emergency. And that maybe happens once a year. A client shooting me an email wanting to have a quick phone call is not an emergency. Think of it this way. If you're in a meeting with one of your clients and one of your other clients calls, would you interrupt the meeting with that client to take the call from the other client? Of course you wouldn't. Would you interrupt a meeting with a client to take an email or respond to a quick email from another client? Of course you wouldn't. And you've got a guard strategy time just like that because you are your most important client. You got to put it on the calendar every single week and guard that time desperately. Do not compromise the time because how many times have you put off your own strategic work to do minor work for a client? Probably a lot if you're anything like me. And is that really minor work for a client more important than the strategy that's going to move your business forward? It's definitely not. And it's Friday afternoon. Virtually all client requests can wait until Monday. Now, if the server is down or if the world is on fire, sure, that's a real emergency, but that's very, very rare. Usually we just tend to put our clients' needs ahead of our own. So it's a, it's a swap in thinking in your mind. Now, the only other time that I've ever really compromised my CEO time is I've got a client that's in town very, very rarely, and 
the last time he was in town, he was only there on a Friday, and we could only schedule in the afternoon. So I actually swapped around. I did CEO time that morning and worked on my strategy, and I met with a client at 1 o'clock that afternoon. But I still got my CEO time in. It's that important. So, I mean, it's your schedule. Do with it what you want. The, the takeaway is what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that there is a block a two to four hour block at some point in the week where you are executing at least one of the goals to get toward your SMART goal. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, there's one more thing I wanna mention and that's a quarterly planning meeting. So just like you did the initial planning meeting, once a quarter, take your CEO time, that four hour block and just Spend some time looking at your business. Go through the process again of looking at what's really the most important thing you need to do. How are your goals working? What needs to be tweaked? And take that time to really look holistically at your business and start to generate some new goals. Because at the end of the quarter, you ought to be pretty close to wrapping up those three goals you set for the previous quarter. So take that CEO time four hours and repeat the initial planning process. Use the goal generator, use the goal manager, and, uh, and just regenerate those things. So do that once a quarter. I promise you this is gonna move your business forward. So again, it starts with that one initial meeting with yourself, get some goals established. Every week, schedule the time to get those goals accomplished. Then every week, spend the time to do it. And then once a quarter, evaluate everything and generate new goals. That's the plan in a nutshell. Now let me wrap this up and we'll take some questions if you have any. Two final suggestions as, uh, as we pull this thing to a close. First of all, and, and this, is, this is just from my own practical experience, you're always going to have more goals than time. So prioritize well. This goes back to what I mentioned at the beginning. Focus on immediate impact to build momentum. You gotta be honest with yourself. What is it that you really, really need to do? And really bring those goals to the top. There's a psychology to this because seeing changes happening motivates you to stick with it. And that's important because sticking to this plan is really tough in the middle of the whirlwind. It is really, really tough. Now, the Franklin Covey Company has put together a study from the corporate world that they called the Law of Diminishing Returns. And what they said was, as they did this study, uh, they looked at corporate individuals and teams and how they did in relationship to the number of goals they were trying to accomplish versus the number of goals they actually achieved. So when teams had two to three active goals they were working on, or individuals had two to three active goals, they actually accomplished two to three active goals with excellence. But if they tried to do four to 10 things, they only got one or two done. If they had 11 to 20 goals, they got none of them done. I mean, think about it as eating a large pizza. If, if, if you look at this pizza and you say, I'm going to take two or three slices out of that pizza, I'm probably going to eat two or three of those slices. If I try to take four to ten slices out of that pizza, I mean, it's got to be a big pizza, and I'm starting to nibble around a little, uh, you know, a few of those or 11 to 20 slices, and I'm trying to eat all of those, I'm going to take little bites out of a lot of them, but I'm probably not going to get any full slices eaten. But if I just focus on a few things, I can get those things done with excellence. Now, this is a study, again, that comes from the corporate world, but it, it's, it's human nature. Get a couple, two or three things to focus on, and you will accomplish them with excellence. You're always going to have more goals than time, so make sure you prioritize well. That means that sometimes good ideas have to be put on a shelf. And that's fine. Just put them on a list. You'll get to them eventually, but do those things that are going to bring the most immediate impact to your business. Just focus on those two or three things and you can do them well. Now, the second suggestion that comes from my experience is taming the whirlwind takes time. So give yourself a break. 
If you don't blow it away with this immediately, it's okay. Uh, Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. And sometimes that happens when you're dealing with the whirlwind. You have this great goal. You've got the sheets filled out. You've got wonderful declarations that you have printed out and put in front of your monitor. And you're staring at them every day and they're nagging you and you know they're important. And then all of a sudden the whirlwind happens and you get swept away. And one week you end up not getting anything done with your goals. Give yourself a break. It takes time to build good habits. Stick with it. It's a work in progress. So don't quit just because at the very beginning you're struggling with actually getting all these things put into place. It's okay. It takes time to develop these habits. Uh, G.K. Chesterton uh, said something along the lines of, anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. That's my adaptation of his quote. And I love that quote. It's so important to keep this in mind as you're dealing with the whirlwind. Anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. So make that commitment to yourself. You know, I realize this is important. I'm real. I'm going to do this. I'm going to move forward. Even if I struggle and fail a little bit at the beginning, I'm going to keep at it because it's worth doing. And anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. So as we wrap up, remember, the whirlwind never goes away. It never goes away. When urgency and importance clash, urgency wins every time. So you got to develop and execute the strategy that we've talked about so that you can truly accomplish your goals in the middle of the whirlwind. Now, let me, let's wrap up with this question. In six months, if you truly did this and you were full in, even if you made some mistakes, it didn't do it perfectly, but if you were working at this process and strategy in six months, How would your business change? How different would it look? How would those things that are frustrating you right now be dealt with? How many great ideas that you know are out there and you know need to get done, how many of those ideas could you pull off and how would your business change if you did it? And more importantly, how would your life change if you did this? If you could really start getting your business under control, how would that impact the rest of your life? Folks, it starts with taking two hours and going somewhere away from screens, unplugging, working through those goal worksheets I gave you, and just starting to get the plan in place. And then one week after the next week after the next week, planning time to just work one of those goals, and you will start to see momentum happening in your business you'll start to see the whirlwind becoming contained in the boxes you build for it. And you will start to see your business becoming more efficient, more productive, and more profitable. So thanks. That's the end of this talk today. Again, uh, that's the link that should have worked, (laughs) but apparently it's not. We'll make sure that's working a little bit later. Uh, Not quite sure what's going on there, but you can download those goal sheets uh, at that particular link. And let me also give you a link to the slides I'm going to drop that back in the chat window as well. That's the second Dropbox link that's there in the chat. Uh, And we have time for questions. So any uh, any questions that have not yet been asked that you'd like to do that, I'll hang around here for the next couple of minutes. Questions that you'd like to ask on implementing this process or anything else, drop those in the the questions area of the GoToWebinar control panel. questions or comments, you can also tweet at me, by the way, at Nathan Ingram. Make sure you include at Liquid Web on that as well. Be happy to answer those questions after the fact or uh, any comments you'd like to make about today. Let me ask this. Uh, Just drop this in the questions area. What do you feel like is going to be the most challenging thing to you to pull this off? Yeah, so actually scheduling the time. I think that's that's true. That's a good response. Somebody else. Other questions? What do you think is going to be the most challenging thing? Yeah, so Kim is saying sticking to a schedule. Absolutely. And it's tough, right? That's why at the beginning of the week, block out your time. Now, very rarely do I have, you know, I'm going to work on this from 8 to 8.30. I just block out the morning. And I know there's some things I'm going to get accomplished in the morning. 
Because if you're a freelancer, you're constantly being pulled in different directions. If you hit your chair on Monday morning with a plan, you're gonna find that your week has a lot more structure. Even if you don't execute 100%, you're gonna find that the whirlwind starts to behave a little bit. It's remarkable. Matter of fact, we had, I don't know if some of you guys, if you're following this on Twitter, um, we had a person respond. I did this content and it was about a three hour productivity workshop at WordCamp Phoenix back in February. And one of the participants in that seminar talked about how this has totally changed her business. And now her and her business partner have scheduled Friday afternoon for strategy time and they're doing it and things are working, uh, moving forward. I just love to hear stuff like that. So I promise you guys this works. If you'll put the time into it, you really can move your business forward. Well, since we're not getting any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. I really do appreciate you guys investing the last hour with me. Hopefully this has been uh, good content and a good investment of your time. I appreciate Liquid Web for sponsoring this webinar. Uh, Liquid Web is, uh, you know, they are con they're constantly trying to find ways to help you as a business owner do better in your web business. And these webinars are just another indication of that. So thanks again, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of the weekend. And thanks for being with us here on Liquid Web, where you find the most helpful humans in hosting.